This is Boris the Micra, and this is the Casino de Monte Carlo in Monaco. In a week's time, Boris and I will be embarking on a road trip from here in Reading, England, to that casino in Monaco, which is a bit of a risk when you consider that this is the most unreliable car that I have ever owned. This car has required four separate engines in my year and a half's ownership, and it has broken down more times than I can count. But luckily for me, Chris Slicks and Matt Armstrong, two lads who really know their way around a car, will be joining me on this journey in their two Aston Martins. During this road trip, we won't just be going to Monaco. We will also be going to places like Milan and also roads like the very famous Stelvio Pass. In this video, we are going to be doing various modifications, improvements, and servicing to make Boris as road trip worthy as we possibly can. For example, the Stelvio Pass is very heavy on the brakes, so we definitely need to change our front discs and pads. However, before we get into any of that kind of stuff, let's go back in time to a couple of days ago when I was at the exhaust company and we got a brand new exhaust fitted on Boris. A lot of eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that Boris's side exit exhaust has actually been removed. And the reason why I had to take it off is because, as you can see, it got absolutely ruined when I went over a curb. And I actually had to chop off the rear portion of the side exit in order to make the car drivable. And today, we need to reinstate an exhaust to Boris that is worthy of a two and a half thousand mile road trip. So here I am a few days before the clips that you've just watched, and we are here with Boris at the exhaust company. We're fitting a new exhaust, and we are just going to do a normal rear exiting exhaust which should hopefully drone less and be more legal for the road trip so with that said let's get Boris up on the ramp and get this new exhaust fitted right ladies and gents so after getting Boris up on the ramp we have realized that Boris was very close to dying basically <laughs> so I've chopped the exhaust off here and over here we have a melted fuel tank and if the fuel leaked out of that and went into the exhaust, apparently we would have had a very, very big fire. So very lucky we're getting this change before the road trip. The process of creating a custom exhaust involves a lot of measuring and also a load of welding. Once the guys at the exhaust company had created the exhaust, we could then pick the exhaust tip. So the tip that we are choosing is this four inch kind of blue blue exhaust tip and it is going to be sitting in this exhaust hole just up there Boris's new exhaust is now finished. Just take a look at how gorgeous this looks. We have got a load of new hangers under here as well to keep it in place. And the welds are just absolutely magnificent. Big up to the guys here at the exhaust company. They are very good at what they do. And this is what it sounds like. Great success. So now that Boris has a more legal exhaust, which is less likely to be ripped off by a curb or a speed bump, we can now move on to the next modification, which is to help with the cooling of the car, which is going to be very important on this road trip because we are going to some very hot countries. Off camera a couple of weeks ago, I did fit a lovely, thick aluminium radiator to make Boris a lot more efficient with the cooling system. However, there is one more thing I want to do. These are the standard grills that are on Nissan Micros, and at the minute, Boris's ones are exactly like these ones that I'm holding, but just black. So all I'm going to do right now is cut out this middle section in order to get a load more airflow through these grills, through the radiator, which will hopefully improve the cooling. The only way I could think of doing this was by attacking the grills with the angle grinder. Now, this definitely isn't the neatest way of doing it or the most efficient. However, it did give us the desired outcome. After filing down the surfaces of the grill and giving it a bit of a clean, I could then move on to the painting phase, which involved one layer of primer and a few layers of black paint. Whilst the paint was drying, I decided to give Boris an oil change. Once I had finished the oil change, I could then take out our old grills and put in our beautiful new ones. Oh, that is so sick, it's got nothing on the ground. <laughs> well, that looks 
looks so good. What? Mate, it makes Mate, a world of difference. That looks unreal. So as you can tell, Joe and I were both ecstatic with these grills. I think they make the car look so much better and also they are functional. We will be getting a lot more airflow through to that radiator, which will definitely help a bit in keeping the car cool. Ladies and gents, take a look at these new grills. I think these look absolutely unreal. I can't believe I haven't thought of this before. It looks like he has flared nostrils and we are definitely getting far more airflow of this for sure. I just think that looks so good. I'm actually so gassed with that. I didn't expect it to look that good. And we have also done the oil change as well. So he's running more reliably, looking better and getting more airflow. That is a job well done. After finishing up with the grills, I then took Boris all the way up to Birmingham to an audio shop called The Bass Bin to get a brand new sound system fitted because as many of you may know, on a long journey or a road trip, a sound system is very important. Whilst the guys at the base bin worked their magic, I grabbed the new subwoofer from inside and I placed it in the boot of Boris and apparently this is an absolute behemoth of a subwoofer. But all of this work did not come cheap. This is probably up there with one of the most expensive mods I've done to Boris, but I think the car deserves it. So with all of that said, let's get Boris back to the unit and check out this new sound system. So guys, we are now back from the base bin and and let me show you this insane sound system. Firstly, we have some upgraded tweeters. These are bigger and have better sound quality than the previous tweeters we had. And we also have some JBL door card speakers. These are again upgraded and much better than the previous speakers. And as for the stereo, we have just kept Boris's original Pioneer stereo. As for the subwoofer, which is obviously responsible for all of the bass, this was the old one that we had in Boris. It was kind of a 15 inch diameter subwoofer. And now we have this kind of dual box. I don't know anything about subwoofers, so I can't really give you an insight. All I know is that this has insane bass. I mean, that is insane. <laughs> So as you just heard, that sound system is absolutely unreal. I'm going to be bouncing Boris on the motorways of France, which is going to be a load of fun. But now we need to address the fuel tank melting problem, which I alerted you to at the start of this video. It needs replacing. We've got a new fuel tank. Let's get it fitted. I picked up this fuel tank for around £40 from a breaker's yard and this is just a regular standard micro fuel tank. Now to fit this, I started off by lifting Boris up on the ramp. Before undoing any bolts, I firstly had to drain all of the remaining fuel out of the old tank. And because I had nothing to siphon the fuel out with, I opted to just drill a hole straight into the old fuel tank. Now, if you guys are ever planning on doing something similar, I strongly suggest that you wear safety goggles because I can tell you from experience, fuel in your eye is no fun whatsoever. Now, before going ahead with removing the fuel tank itself, I also had to disconnect the fuel feed and the fuel return lines from the fuel pump. And then I could get back underneath the car and remove some exhaust heat shielding. After that, I had to disconnect the fuel filling nozzle. I could then finally undo the bolts of the two metal straps which are responsible for securing the fuel tank to the car. Right guys, so now that this fuel tank is off the car and on the floor, you can see why exactly I wanted to change this before the road trip. Basically, the strap has been heated up by that exhaust that was cut off halfway down the car and it has melted a significant way through this plastic fuel tank. And luckily it didn't go all the way through, but I wouldn't be surprised if a couple more weeks of driving like that, this would have gone all the way through. We would have had a fuel leak and we potentially would have had fuel going into the exhaust, which would not have been very good at all. In fact, it would have been disastrous. So thank God that that didn't happen. We now have a dead fuel tank, which we can throw away and we can get the lovely new one on. So let's get into it. But before actually getting the new fuel tank on the car, I firstly had to swap the fuel pump over from the old fuel tank to the new fuel tank. And I also had to take the exhaust heat shielding of the old tank and put it on the new tank. Yeah, yeah. 
I really feel it's my time, think it's my year, yeah. Once that was done, Joe and I could steadily lift in the new fuel tank, making sure to secure it by bolting in the metal straps. Yeah, I really feel it's my yeah. time, think it's my pen ready. Used to hold myself back. I then connected up the fuel filler nozzle. Yeah. Ran through everything in front of me, my smoke been heavy, got a whole agenda. Can't aspire to get a hit, so bump that. Followed by the exhaust heat shielding. After that, I could lower the car onto the ground, and then I could reconnect the fuel feed and fuel return lines. Never come unless you pay attention, so no, I can't miss that move. MVP, I got the record, I might have to throw some big jump worthy. They gon so, as you have just seen, we have now successfully fitted a brand new fuel tank to Boris. We are now going to take Boris to Quick Fit. And the reason why is because we want to get a wheel alignment, which is not only going to help Boris's handling, but also his fuel economy, which is, of course, very important, especially to me on a two and a half thousand mile road trip. So, let's go. Now, unfortunately, I was not allowed to film at Quick Fit, but what these guys were doing was something that is called a hunter alignment. Now, what this basically does is you attach one sensor on either of the front wheels and it reads your alignment and it tells you what kind of adjustments to make and the result of this is perfectly straight wheels which is very good for our road trip right guys so we now have got the wheel alignment sorted out boris is pointing straight he's handling better and he now has better fuel economy which is very good we are now going to be doing some brakes boris's brakes are old they've been on there for a year and a half they're not dead yet the pads have got plenty of life left but i want to put some fresh discs and pads on there because as i've mentioned earlier we are going to the stelvio pass and we're going down it so we need some good brakes to ensure that boris and i don't go head first over a cliff. So that is going to be a very important mod that we're doing right now. We've got some padded discs and pads. Let's get them fitted. Now, I'm aware that padded discs and pads are a good road setup, but they're not optimized for high temperature, high performance braking. And when you're going down a pass like Stelvio with a very steep incline and lots of turns, you are going to get the brakes pretty hot. So I'm aware that this brake setup isn't necessarily the best for the task at hand, but I did actually order a high performance set of pads and discs. However, due to a Royal Mail delay, they didn't come in time for the road trip so unfortunately I couldn't fit them and this was a last minute option from Euro Car Parts. Now as for fitting these brakes on a Nissan Micra it could not be more simple. There are just two bolts that you have to undo to remove the caliper. And then there are just two more bolts that you have to undo to take off the caliper rail and after that you can remove the brake disc. Then it is just a matter of putting on the new disc and then putting back on the caliper rail. Once that's done I could then put in the new pads, wind back the caliper piston and then finally put back on the caliper and bolt it all up. Once the passenger side was all finished, I could then do the exact same thing on the driver's side. Oh! Oh! Oh, they feel good. One more. Oh, yeah. Oh! We've done a good thing there, Joe. They, they feel great. So, ladies and gents, Boris the Micra, a one litre car which has only ever built for trips to your local Tesco and picking up a meal deal, is now officially as ready as it can be to embark on a big adventure through Europe. I'm not sure whether it will survive. We've done everything that we can to ensure that it does. However, that is now up to the powers that be whether this car does actually survive or not. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, all right? I'm hoping that we do survive. If you do wanna keep up to date with what actually happens on this road trip, ladies and gents, then subscribe to the YouTube. Click that like button on this video as well because it helps out a load. And let me know down in the comments below what you think is going to happen on this road trip and also what you think of all the work that we have done today in this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.